Module number one, Stylistic Elements and Creative Writing by Maricela Gonzalez. Greetings, my name is Miss Gonzalez. Today I will be teaching you about several stylistic elements to use in your creative writing. I will be your guide through modules one through four. You are now viewing module number one stylistic elements in creative writing. In this module, we will discuss the following. You will be able to write a short story using the Freytag Pyramid, otherwise known as plot diagram or story mapping. Your first objective is that you will analyze what the Freytag Pyramid is and how it is the base of a creative writing story. Your objective two is that you will produce background information using stylistic elements such as characterization, genre, conflict, and theme to identify your creative writing agenda. Objective three, you will identify what static and dynamic characters are and their importance in creative writing. Objective 1.4 You will synthesize between your chosen characters and formulate a story outline to help guide your creative writing product. Make sure to pay close attention to the special note icon at the bottom of the screen in efforts to supplement your multimedia training. Hope you enjoy. Goal 1. You will be able to write a short story using the Freytag Pyramid PDF file, otherwise known as plot diagram, i.e. story mapping. As you can see here, the Freytag Pyramid looks like this. In the beginning of a story, you start off with the exposition. This is typically where you will see all of the characters being developed and introduced. Now, characters may not be developed all at once. They may be developed within the entire plot line. However, in the exposition, as I mentioned, is where you typically see characterization played out. Then, within the Freytag Pyramid, you have the rising action. In the rising action, you see the protagonist going into their actual problem. They aren't there yet, but they are setting themselves up for all of the events that will eventually reach the climax. The climax, otherwise known as the point of no return. The climax is the highest most point of a story. The reason that it is called the point of no return is because when the story hits the climax, an event has occurred that shall shift the dynamics of the entire story. At this point, things shall never be the same. At this point, you are getting ready to go down the falling action slope. The characters, as they go down the falling action, are simply being put in a situation where they have already gone through the climax. The falling action is all of the events that take place after the climax has already occurred. And finally you have the denouement. The denouement is also known as the story's resolution. In the denouement or the story's resolution, this is where you see all of the events that had played out before come together as the problem has hopefully been resolved for the characters. Objective 1.1 Students will analyze what the Freytag Pyramid is and how it is the base of a creative writing story. As mentioned before, you first start off with the exposition. 
Exposition, again, consists of early material providing the theme, establishing the setting, and introducing the major characters, and sometimes early hints of the coming conflict. Let's review. For rising action, you see an increase in tension or uncertainty developing out of the conflict the protagonist faces. The complication is definitely mounting. Then you hit the climax of the story, or otherwise known as the point of no return, or the shift in the story's timeline. Traditionally situated in the third act of a play, the climax is the moment of greatest tension, uncertainty, or greatest tension. The audience is also involved. The climax is also called the crisis. Now at this point, after the climax has hit within the story frame, the story hits the reversal into the falling action. The moment of reversal is also called the peripatia in classical tragedy. The reversal is that moment in which the protagonist's fortunes change irrecoverably for the worse. Frequently, the very trait we admire in a tragic hero is the same trait that brings about the hero's downfall. At some point after the reversal, the tragic hero realizes or verbalizes his tragic error. This moment of tragic recognition is called the anagnorisis. During the falling action, the earlier tragic force causes the falling fortunes of the hero. This culminates in the final catastrophe and invokes catharsis emotional purgation in the audience. Then finally, the catastrophe occurs. The catastrophe often spirals outward. Not only does the hero suffer for an earlier choice, but that choice causes suffering to those the hero loves or wants to protect. Moment of last suspense is next. After the suspense ends, the denouement unwinds previous tension and helps provide closure. That is the resolution. This is the structure of a tragedy. It is an example of how you would see a tragedy play out. Freytag Pyramid was adapted from Gustav Freytag's Technik des Dramas, 1863. Objective 1.2 you will produce background information using stylistic elements such as characterization, genre, conflict, and theme to identify your creative writing agenda. First, we start off with characterization. What exactly is that? Characterization is the development of characters and their personality types. If you look on the screen, I've provided three examples. The black and white picture states the following. There's no such thing as love, it's fantasy. If I were to add this character into my own creative writing, she would play the role of the pessimist, unwilling to believe that love is actual. Instead, she has a pessimistic or a negative attitude towards love. That is the development of her character within my creative writing format. To the right, I have another character. It states within the video, I'm emotionally damaged. She would play the emotionally damaged character in my creative writing piece, and everything about her would show her emotional distress. And perhaps if I were to be writing her in as a protagonist, her emotionally damaged state would be her downfall the problem within the story, and I would try my hardest to try to find a way to alleviate that within her, i.e. internal conflict. 
then right below these two frameworks, we see the insensitive friend. That is another character that I could possibly develop within characterization. Are you crying? How insensitive. Genre. As we move on, we now have different variations of the word genre. Genre itself is a noun. It is a plural noun. Genres. A category of artistic composition as in music or literature, characterized by similarities in form, style, or subject matter. Genre has different variations. For example, genre could have mystery, fantasy, historical fiction, biography, informational, traditional literature, biography, informational, realistic fiction, science fiction, historical fiction, mystery, and so on and so forth, and it keeps on going. There are so many different variations within genre, romance, etc. Take a moment to reflect on the note below. I've provided an example on fairy tales. Definition. Literary genre that is a story, usually for children, about elves, hobgoblins, dragons, fairies, or other magical creatures. Examples of this are Hansel and Gretel, Jack and the Beanstalk, The Ugly Duckling, The Shoemaker and the Elves, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Conflict. There are four types of conflict man versus man, man versus nature, man versus himself, man versus society. The most straightforward type of external conflict is when a character in a story struggles against another character physically. In William Golding's novel, The Lord of the Flies, for example, Ralph, the leader of the good guys, steadily comes into conflict with Jack, a bully who later forms a tribe of hunters. Jack and his tribe give in to their savage instinct and make attempts to hunt or kill the civilized batch of boys headed by Ralph. Moving on to theme. A common message that shows up in many stories, across many genres, and across cultures. It is important to note that theme is mostly referred as the overall message of the story. Many people confuse theme with restating the sequence of events that take place within a story, but that is considered the plot. The theme of a story is the message that the author leaves the reader after the read. In fact, a creative writing story may have many themes. Take a moment and look at these two examples. Themes in Hamlet by William Shakespeare. As pointed out before, there can be many themes to a particular story. In Shakespeare's Hamlet, there are four themes that strike the attention. Number one, the impossibility of certainty. Number two, the complexity of action. Hamlet must do something, but he must do something without showing what he knows for his father's ghost has revealed to him the horrible, horrible actions that his mother has bestowed upon his father's untimely death. What a deep theme! Another theme of Shakespeare's Hamlet, the mystery of death, the intrigue behind his father's loss. Yet another theme, the nation 
as a diseased body living in a society where you know the society is plagued with disease not literal disease but a degeneration of society as a whole conversely we have themes in the famous Lord of the Flies by William Golding two themes come to mind number one civilization versus savagery when the plane comes down people automatically children that survive they break away into two diverse groups people automatically have that disposition to revert to savagery here they are in an island away from civilization the theme here is civilization versus savagery theme number two loss of innocence they are children when they enter the island they are children no more after the island they have gone through savagery and come out of it different that is the shift within the story that is a great theme objective 1.3 you will identify what static and dynamic characters are and their importance in the writing static characters do not change they do not go through change sorry no change versus a dynamic character a dynamic character is typically one with an inspiring personality i e one whom goes through a dramatic change within themselves dynamic characters typically experience some type of dramatic change within the plot that is dynamic characters are not necessarily better in narrative art than static ones every player plays its role every player plays its part static character characters examples when you think back to your childhood you imagine all of the wonderful wonderful cartoons that you saw especially Disney putting them out there was a blessing to children young and old here I have provided three examples of static and dynamic characters from childhood in the story Pinocchio Geppetto doesn't change throughout the story if you think about it within Pinocchio he is a consistent character of consistent personality he is a supporting character throughout the story still necessary but nonetheless non-changing static in addition Little Red Riding Hood the wolf in Little Red Riding Hood is a constant scheming nuisance to Little Red Riding Hood his demeanor within the folktale never changes he is static in Cinderella her fairy godmother's personality is simple she exists within the story to do one thing and that is to support the dynamic character Cinderella who does go through a transformation she is a static character And then there are dynamic characters who do change, who do experience a shift in personality, who go through some enlightenment, who alter and shift the plot. Hamlet underwent a major change in his life when his father was murdered. He was the prince next to be king and it was untimely to see that his father 
had been murdered at the hands of his uncle. Well, the ghost of his father revealed to Hamlet that his own mother was having an affair with his uncle Claudius. That's bound to change anyone. Hamlet struggles back and forth on whether he should take his own life, as his life has lost its color and is now plagued with the desire of vengeance. Hamlet is a dynamic character. Then there is Pinocchio, who starts off as a wooden puppet. He exists initially to merely have Geppetto fulfill a goal that he feels Pinocchio is doing for him. Geppetto is an old man, older gentleman, who's never had children. Pinocchio fulfills that desire within him. But Pinocchio is simply a wooden puppet. In Pinocchio, he is Pinocchio given an opportunity to transform and make Geppetto's longing and desire to have a real boy become reality. Pinocchio must go through trials and tribulations on his own personal journey to one day become a real boy. Along the way, he fails to see the great responsibility it takes to be human and falls prey to life's corruption. Fortunately, he is faced with a life-changing event that eventually makes him think of others. This change in his conscience finally allows Pinocchio to show he is worthy of becoming human. Pinocchio is a dynamic character. Let's try some forward thinking. Objective 1.4 Students will synthesize between their chosen characters and formulate a story outlined to guide their creative writing product. By students, I mean you. You will do this now. There are three steps that you must follow to ensure success in the forward thinking practice drill. Step number one. Now it's your turn to think about the characters that you will develop. Here is a creative writing prompt to help you get started. Step number two. Come up with a list of five characters that you will incorporate into your own fractured tale. Write down descriptive qualities that you want your characters to possess. The story you will later develop will be on the following creative writing topic. Retell the story of a Disney movie with one change. The princess is now a hipster. Move on to step number three. This is the point where you will see the pause icon. It will also appear within other modules. This is me prompting you to press the pause button after the instruction has been given to you. Now, pause the multimedia video and jot down a list of possible characters that you might want to develop. Which of your characters might be the dynamic ones? Which of your characters might be the static ones? Make sure you write physical as well as personality descriptions of each character. Of course, these character descriptors may later change, and that's fine. This time, take a moment to look at the special notes icon below if you are unsure what a fractured fairy tale is. So what is a fractured fairy tale? A fractured fairy tale is a story that uses fairy tales you know and then changes the characters, the settings, points of view, or plots. Again, go ahead and now pause the multimedia video and jot down a list of possible characters that you may want to develop. Take as long as you need to get this step completed. Synthesizing Making Connections Here is simply an example of synthesizing. The word synthesize means to make connections. 
As a good creative writer, you should be able to make connections within the characters that you choose to develop through characterization. Just making a simple outline that looks similar to this can help you formulate and make strategic the way that you would like the plot to develop in your creative writing. Take a moment and just look at how this outline has been made. Remember, you may pause the multimedia video at any time. Now it's time to take a quiz on what you have learned. Number one, which stylistic element best describes the following picture? Change. Is it A, dynamic character? Or is it B, static character? If you chose A, dynamic character, you are correct. Number two, which stylistic element describes the following picture? Is it A, internal conflict? Or is it B, external conflict? If you chose B, external conflict, you are correct. Number three, which stylistic element describes the following picture? Nothing will ever be the same. Is it A, point of no return, otherwise known as the climax? Or is it B, rising action? If you chose A, point of no return, you are correct. Number four, which stylistic element describes the following picture? The early bird gets the worm. Is it A, theme? Or is it B, genre? If you chose A, theme, you are correct. Having viewed this lesson module, you learned about the Freytag Tag Pyramid, stylistic elements such as characterization, genre, conflict, and theme. You also learned how to synthesize and formulate a story outline to guide your creative writing project. Now it's time to move on to module two figurative language and creative writing, where you will learn how to use figurative language in your creative writing piece to enhance imagery, appeal to the five senses, and suggest mood. Hope you enjoy.